Five years ago, life as we knew it changed completely. The World Health Organization declared a global pandemic. Grocery store shelves were bare, highways were ghost towns, ICUs were packed, and every parent in America became a teacher. When it came to education, our kids suffered, and we are still seeing the scars. The Education Recovery Scorecard shows that the average U.S. student still remains nearly a half a grade behind pre-pandemic reading and math achievement with outcomes even worse for low income students. So how do we get our kids caught up and back on track? My next guest wrote that education recovery scorecard and knows how the pandemic broke schools and is working on how to fix it. Stanford University professor of poverty and inequality, Sean Reardon joining me now. Sean, good to see you. So Thanks for five me, years, Oh, it's a pleasure. Five years later now, how are kids, our kids overall, still being affected by COVID? Well, um, five years ago, you know, schools closed in many parts of the country and kids are still well behind. They're a half grade level behind on average, uh, which is a which is a which is a big fall. And uh, we've made some recovery progress in the last few years, but we have a long way to go. So a long way to go. Tell me where we need to start and, and can these kids catch up? Is that possible? And if so, how? It's certainly possible. I mean, when we say the, that kids are a half grade level behind, that's true for the average student in the country, but there are a lot of school districts in the country where kids have caught up and are doing as well or even better than they were five years ago. Most of those, uh, are pretty affluent districts. Um, kids in higher poverty communities on average still tend to be behind, but even in poor places like uh, Compton, California, Los Angeles, those, kids in those places have caught up to where they were five years ago. So it, it is possible, like there are places uh, where we've seen that happen, but a lot of places where that hasn't. So let's go to Compton, uh, because I used to work, live in the Los Angeles area. I have been to a number of those public schools. Some are actually really fantastic. And when we talk about low-income uh, minority kids, what did they do right in Compton? I don't know specifically about Compton, but, but when we've talked to folks around the country in some of these districts where things have gone better, often it's because they, they really focused on... Um, making sure all the systems in the school were organized on helping kids get back on track. So they, they're trying to help kids get to school and not be absent. They're, they're, they're doing intensive tutoring. They're doing after school programs. They're doing summer school programs. They've got um, mental health supports. And so the, the places that really have tried to marshal their resources and use some of the extra resources that the federal government was able to provide um, in, in those ways, I think, um, have been the most successful places. And we can, I think, learn some lessons from them. So how do we, how do we take those lessons now and put them into the communities, into the schools that need to catch up? Is there anything in place to take what you've learned and actually get it going? <laughs> um, I, I think the, the ball is in the state's hands now. So, um, you know, states control a lot of the, the funding for education, they control curriculum, they control where resources are targeted, um, and they can really help target resources towards the school districts and the communities that need it the most. They can help provide kind of guidance, they can help uh, inform people about what the best research says about the effective strategy. So I think we need a lot of leadership from state governments. And then we, you know, I think parents and communities, uh, community leaders can can really help to advocate for kids to make sure kids are coming to school. As you know, I'm sure chronic absenteeism is, remains a big problem and has grown since the, the pandemic started. And obviously, if kids aren't in school regularly, not only is it hard for them to learn and catch up, but it also affects their classmates learning because kids coming in out of school is disruptive. Uh, the teacher has to sort of manage teaching kids who you know missed a few days as well as kids who were there. And so I think um, kind of marshalling the kind of resources in communities, um, both in and out of the school to help kids get to school and then help uh, for school districts to really focus on kind of academics, I think is gonna be part of the way back. 
In addition to that, I have to ask you about this week, you know, in the Department of Education. Uh, the president wants to completely get rid of it, but it's already laid off thousands of employees, including a lot of those folks who collect data on academic outcomes and how many is spent and, and, and if it's successful. So how do you think the loss of what we're seeing at the Department of Ed, um, certain programs and data and, uh, analysts, you know, will impact the ability to, to help students bounce back? Yeah, I, I, it's a good question. I'm really quite concerned about it. Um, you know, everyone wants America's schools to improve, wants our kids to have the best chance to succeed. And one of the ways we do that is by studying the things that work. Uh, you know, we have 13,000 school districts. They're all trying different things. And research can sort of help us figure out which are the strategies, which are the curricula, which are the instructional strategies, what kind of teacher training programs are better for kids. And, and it's researchers at universities and, and research organizations that kind of use the data, much of it collected by the U.S. Department of Education, to study those things and provide rigorous answers to those that then can guide policy and help teachers know what to do in the classroom. And so I worry that without the, the U.S. Department of Education collecting that data and using it to facilitate research um, that we're going to go a little bit back into the dark ages in terms of trying to understand how to improve our schools. Professor Sean Reardon, great to have your insight and your research. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Karen.